what was the main reason for the development of the Passive House standard? Uh, well, we have been seeing uh, the issues of uh, climate change and the issues of uh, demand for uh, energy uh, for the whole world. Uh, from the beginning of the 80s. So there has to be a solution to reduce fossil fuel use. And while the energy demand for heating of buildings is the highest energy demand in the European Union, uh, this was an important task uh, to be done. What does Passive House mean for the UK? Well, I think that uh, the Passive House approach uh, fits very well to UK climate and also to uh, UK uh, architectural tradition. Uh, so what I've already seen is that the examples which have been built so far, uh, they are uh, 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 well, uh, 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 very interesting buildings and uh, 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 it's a very nice approach to, to do that. And I think that uh, you'll see after industry joining in uh, that to, to have these components which you need for UK, that's, uh, that's a quite interesting way to also have additional employment uh, for the industry here. From your experience with the uptake of Passive House in Germany and Austria, what would UK building professionals need to do to ensure cost effectiveness? You know, but the Passive House is a performance standard. That means that uh, you can design a Passive House uh, to just meet the criteria. And that means that you don't have to do all the fancy stuff that uh, is normally attributed to what people think is a green building. Uh, you just have to design it in a proper way using uh, the, the less uh, expensive uh, uh, constructions and materials uh, which are available on the market and you'll get a good solution for, 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 for this part. What I think in general what's important that is uh, to get industry in. Uh, and that, that's what, what uh, was uh, uh, happening in, uh, on the continent as well. Uh, if you can motivate uh, all the producers, say for windows, say for ventilation systems, uh, for wall constructions, um, to have a solution available, uh, this will be a much less expensive solution than if you have to do it in every, uh, in, in every building again and again. I understand you live in the first passive house built in Germany. Uh, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions about that. Firstly, what lessons did you learn from the construction and monitoring? Well, uh, for, for, for me as a physicist, we were, uh, we were designing the house using uh, simulation tools uh, which use the fundamental laws of physics. And of course, we haven't been sure whether there might be some what physicists call a dirt effect, yeah? that there are some influences which you can't calculate for and everything changes. And uh, the surprising thing was there was nothing like that. It all, it all behaved uh, uh, due to these uh, theoretical concepts which, are, which have been available by uh, physicists. Uh, it's interesting that was in the 19th century. Uh, the laws of thermodynamics, uh, uh, the most important uh, physicist working on that was uh, Maxwell. And, and, and his laws, they are valid uh, for, for the buildings and that has been proven true even for these very low energy buildings. So that was the most uh, surprising thing for me. And another thing what was surprising is that people are able uh, to use these concepts uh, very easily. So uh, yeah, you, you, you just know if it's too warm, well, you open the window and you get some cold air in. And if it's too cold again, you close it. So this is not, not, not very difficult. So people accept the technology and are able to use it. So that was the main result of this experiment. And what has changed in the standard since that first passive house? It's again a surprising thing. The standard hasn't changed at all. This is like all the, the laws of physics. They don't change. Yeah? Uh, but what has changed is that now all the construction details and components they are available on the market. So in the first house we had to do it uh, with, a, uh, with our own hands uh, to insulate the window frames and, and to tighten up the walls and all these things. With, uh, and so it was a big effort uh, to reach the standard uh, uh, 20 years ago. Uh, but nowadays you have all these components uh, freely available on the market and that makes it much easier uh, to do the same thing. What's the benefit of achieving the Passive House standard? Uh, what I see now is uh, most important uh, benefit is a healthy indoor environment. 
Uh, you get fresh air all the time without uh, having to care about that all the time. Uh, you have uh, very comfortable uh, indoor climatic uh, conditions, much more comfortable than in traditional buildings. Uh, and uh, at the same time, you have a very low energy bill, which might be important in the future because uh, energy prices are uh, still rising. Uh, so uh, the overall energy bill in, in such a passive house uh, uh, last year, with last year's energy prices, is in the range of 150 to 200 euro a year, uh, not, not a month, but a year. So that means that's a very low, low bills. So these are the, the advantages for the owners. Uh, but there, is, there are also two advantages for society as a whole. One is that we avoid uh, emission of uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, it's a factor 10 reduction of that. And the other is uh, that this changes uh, the creation of wealth from importing uh, uh, fossil fuels like gas and oil uh, uh, substituting that by products which are produced within the European Union. Uh, and so this is uh, what is good for all of us. Uh, so, so these are the, the overall advantages of that technology. Lots of attention seems to be placed on the thermal performance and low running costs of a passive house. Could you describe the importance of the internal comfort and air quality that a passive house provides? The approach is like the following. Uh, we, we very well know uh, what good indoor climate means. Yeah? Uh, uh, there, there are international norms about uh, thermal comfort and uh, this is the basics for the design of every building. So that was at the, at the basic point, at the fundaments of uh, creating the, uh, uh, the standard. Uh, so uh, how to provide good indoor climate uh, with uh, as less as uh, possible efforts uh, on the technology and on the energy use. Uh, and so that's the background for that. And so we try to create tools which allow that, which allow you as an architect to easily design a building which has a very good indoor climate but doesn't use a lot of energy. And finally, what mechanisms and training are in place to ensure that the passive house standard can be practiced or specified by architects and self-builders? There's of course basic information available for free on the internet. Uh, that is uh, uh, for all those who are uh, uh, going to decide whether they want to build a passive house or what they are do going to do or whether they are interested in this topic. Uh, for the professionals, which I think is the most important thing at the moment, uh, that we have education for the professionals. There is a course which has been developed in a uh, collaboration uh, all around Europe. It's called the CIEF course. Uh, uh, that's, that means Certified European Passive House Designers, uh, which is available now in 14 countries uh, in Europe and another four countries, Japan, Canada, uh, Korea and uh, the United States of America. Uh, with all the knowledge which a professional builder needs or an architect, an engineer needs, uh, of course he has already to know uh, his own profession. We, we can't teach uh, a, a professional architect in 10 days, uh, but the additional knowledge he needs to have to build a working passive house, that's uh, teach in this, uh, in, in this 10 days. And this has a tremendous success. Uh, it's already uh, 1,000 uh, uh, professionals who have gone through this course and have made the exam. It's an exam and, and, and the exam isn't, isn't easy to, to, uh, to make. Uh, it's, uh, it's already 1,000 professionals who, who, who did that and, and they are very proud of what, what they achieved and they'll be the designers of the future uh, for, for this uh, development. I also know that BRE uh, has this course in, in, in his office and I think this is a very good idea to do that. Um, this is uh, another, I, I would say it's another advantage of the approach. Uh, everything which is good in education uh, is uh, giving us a higher level of, of knowledge and of insights. And that's another outcome of that. Yeah? So, so now you, you, you get, uh, say, what, I, what I've seen, carpenters who are really interested in that development and, and they very much like to be involved in the process. Thank you. Okay.